Hello friend, welcome back to Acre Homestead. Today we are making two desserts and two appetizers for my best friend's mom's 70th birthday. Her birthday is on Saturday. My friend is responsible for all the food and she needed a little bit of help. So she asked if I would be willing and I said I would be more than willing. So we are going to start by making a blueberry sauce for a cheesecake recipe. I know this pot is a little excessive for this amount of blueberries, but my little pan is in the refrigerator and I don't feel like washing it. So we are going to cook this up in this pan and it won't take very long because there's not very much in here. So I have blueberries, sugar, and some lemon. And we're gonna let that get thick. We're gonna make a blueberry lemon cheesecake and we're gonna make mini ones, a ton of mini little cheesecakes. We're also gonna make two different dips. So one of the dips, is a jalapeno popper dip and the other one is a warm corn dip which these two recipes are brand new to me i have never made either of these recipes but they both call for bacon and so i am going to get the bacon in this pan warming up my friend requested that i make mini cheesecakes and that i make dips but she didn't ask what kind of dip or what kind of cheesecakes so we got to play around with the different flavors and figure out something that we thought would be pretty good. So I, I have a corn dip that's a cold corn dip that I really like, but I thought I would make a warm one this time. And I don't have time tomorrow to make any of these recipes. Today's the day I have to do this. So I looked up recipes that could be made in advance. So I'm gonna get my bacon in here. This is already pre-cooked bacon, but I wanna get it a little bit crispier and I need some of the fat to cook some of the other ingredients. So I'm gonna get this crispy in this pan so we can render out some of the fat to cook the corn and some of the peppers and jalapenos we need. I have a certain amount of time today that I have to get this done. And a couple things I did this morning to help this process go along a little bit faster is I made sure my dishwasher is unloaded. So as soon as I have dishes, I can just put them directly into the dishwasher. I also emptied my garbage can and I took my garbage can from out from under the sink because I know that as I open packages like cream cheese, because we're gonna use a bunch of cream cheese, I'll be able to just throw the garbage right into the can. And then last night to help for today, I pulled out the eggs needed and the cream cheese needed to get to room temperature. And this morning when I had a minute, I washed and kind of prepped all the produce that is needed for today's recipes. Now what we need to do is get this blueberry sauce cooked down and th turned into a thicker sauce because this is not going to be mixed into the cheesecake totally, it's gonna to be a swirl. And so we want it to have a little bit of thickness. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit of water and we're gonna dissolve some, this is tapioca starch, but you could use cornstarch in the water. And we are gonna pour this into our blueberries and we don't want to pour just straight starch powder form into a hot mixture because what that will do is it'll clump the the cornstarch or tapioca starch will get all clumpy and you will never be able to dissolve it so it's always best to dissolve it in water first then we're going to pour it into our blueberry mixture and we're going to cook this just a little bit i did turn the heat down so it wouldn't burn or anything like that because there's not very much of this blueberry in this huge pot and so it could burn really easily now what I'm gonna do is take the blueberry sauce that we've made and I wanna make it really smooth. I don't want all the pulp of the blueberries in our final cheesecake. Oh, and here, here's a tip. Don't let that blueberry mixture harden in your pot. It's gonna be a lot harder to clean. So go ahead and run some water in it just so that it can soak while you finish the rest of your steps. So now we're back with the blueberries. I'm gonna run this through a fine mesh sieve and we're gonna get all the pulp out and the like the nice rich sauce is gonna go into the bowl. Now my friend is you know, planning this really big party for her mom and one tip when you are hosting and to make your life a little less stressful or overwhelming on the idea of hosting is ask your friends and family if they would be willing to help you out. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm helping my friend and I am happy to do it. My mom and I are actually creating a e-course right now all about hosting and tips and tricks on how to make hosting really easy and stress-free. So I'm excited to share that with you as soon as it comes out. This is the butter for the crust that we need for our cheesecakes. 
The mini cheesecakes have three components to it, one being the blueberry sauce, which we already have done, and two being the crust, which I'm gonna get going in here. I just put one cup of graham cracker crumbs into the food processor, and I'm gonna get the butter in here. I'll link all three of these recipes down below. So if you are interested in making any of them, they will be available for you down there. And then to that, I've never made these mini cheesecake recipes before, so hopefully they turn out. We are going to add three tablespoons of granulated sugar. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just get this mixed up right in the food processor, since that's what I used to make the graham cracker crumbs this morning. I'm gonna get these mini muffin tins lined with these paper liner cups. The recipe that I'm following is designed to make mini cheesecakes in a regular muffin tin but I was asked to make mini, mini cheesecakes. So that's what I'm doing here. And so I'm just gonna adapt this recipe for this. And so we'll see if it turns out. I don't see why it shouldn't, but I think it should work just fine, hopefully. I'm gonna take my graham cracker crust and I'm going to just evenly distribute it throughout all of these cups. This ended up being the perfect amount I needed for two of these 24 mini cheesecake trays. This was really, really great, really easy, and the recipe adapted beautifully. I think I was able to evenly distribute that one recipe's worth of filling for all of these mini cupcake liners. And then I have this little tool, and I'm gonna use this, I think, to pound. Oh my goodness, that fits perfect to push down the graham cracker crust. Whoop, that's stuck on there. I cannot believe how perfect this works. The recipe says these need to bake for five minutes, but these are so teeny tiny. I think I'm gonna set the timer for three minutes We'll bake them for three minutes and we'll see how that goes. But I cannot believe how perfect that worked out. I think I'm gonna have it go for another two minutes. So we are gonna do a full five minutes for the, the crust. Hey Siri, set timer for two more minutes. For how long? Two minutes. Two minutes starting now. Now all we have to do is make the filling portion of the cream cheese. I wanted to get going on these little cream cheese bites. Cream cheese bites, that's what they're called. First, because I knew they would be the most labor intensive. The next three recipes we're doing are super easy and two of the recipes have quite a few of the same ingredients. And so it's gonna be really straightforward to get those two done. Let's make the filling for the cream cheese bites. For the filling, we're gonna put two blocks of cream cheese. That is room temperature cream cheese and two eggs. Half a cup of sugar. We need the zest of one lemon.
That last bit was vanilla, and now we're gonna beat this together until smooth. Woo! I am gonna go ahead and clean up this splash that I made. I try to clean as I go when I'm in the kitchen just so that it doesn't get so overwhelming at the end, just, you know, like a bomb went off. Does that always happen? No, but that is my goal. I can tell that I enjoy being in the kitchen if I just tidy up, so that's why I like to keep my garbage can out and I can just enjoy the process a little bit more if I don't have it become a disaster. So here the cheesecake crusts are done. I'm gonna take the time to brush off any graham cracker crumbs from the top of this sheet because I don't want those crumbs to drop into the top of the cheesecake and make it look messy. So because this is not for a party at my house, I am bringing this to someone else's party. I wanna to try to make them as pretty as possible. So I am gonna go through the effort of doing this. If this was for me, I might not go through the effort, but for my friend, I wanna make sure she feels loved and that I took the time to make them as pretty as I could. Now we have all the components for our cheesecake. We have the crust, the filling, and the blueberry top. I think the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna use this mini cookie scoop to fill these. And that per that's perfect. I'm not filling the scoop up all the way, maybe three fourths the way full. I may have to make some more crust. I think that there's more filling than there is going to be crust. This ended up working out just fine. I didn't need to make any more filling, but I want to say that I have never made these mini, mini cheesecakes before, and it seemed intimidating at first, but it was really quite simple. I mean, there were a couple components, and once they were done, I think having the little mini scoop here made it really easy. If I had to do it with a spoon, it would have been a little bit more challenging, but if you want to try these and you think it's intimidating, I think you can do it. My friend's mom, whose birthday it is, is someone I have known since I was five years old. I was homeschooled and so was my friend, and we have been friends since we were five. So her mom has basically kind of been like a second mom to me because I was at my friend's house all the time growing up. And so it's really special to be able to take part in her birthday celebration and kind of help my friend out and be able to celebrate my friend's mom. This was almost the perfect amount of filling for this too, which kind of surprises me because the ratio, it seems like it would be a little bit different when you're making these mini, mini cheesecakes versus making just like a small individual serving size cheesecake. I don't have that much filling left in here. Not enough to make another sheet. I was thinking I might have to make another sheet to use up all the filling, but I think that if I just take it and I evenly distribute it between the ones that weren't quite so full, I can use up all this filling. Now I'm gonna take the blueberry filling and try to put a little bit on each one. Cheesecake is one of those fun recipes where you can get so creative. There's so many different flavor options you can do and you can really change up the dessert just by changing up the flavor profile. So you could in this, instead of doing blueberries, you could do raspberries. What would be really cute, I'm just thinking, is putting one little cherry, if you had like cherry pie filling and you just plopped one individual cherry on top of each one of these mini, mini cheesecakes, that would be so cute too. Or you could just make them plain and that would be really easy. If you didn't have to go through the step of making a blueberry sauce, this would have been done really really quickly i wanted to try to use as much of the sauce as possible so i just get a little dollop in each one and then what i end up doing is cleaning around the what muffin tin <laughs> yeah it's a it's a mini muffin tin technically because i didn't want that blueberry baking onto the tin because i thought that that would be a pain to clean up later so instead of cleaning up later once it was baked on i thought i would go ahead and take the a minute to clean it up now so now that I've done that, I'm gonna take a skewer and I'm gonna swirl the blueberry and the lemon filling all together so that it creates a nice design. Really simple, really, really easy. 
and now they are basically ready to go into the oven and then we can get going on our other recipes. I think these are some of the cutest things I have made in a long time, as long as they turn out properly. The recipe calls to bake these for 25 minutes, but I'm gonna set a timer, I think for 10. And I'm thinking it'll probably take 20 minutes to bake those because they're pretty itty bitty. One thing basically completely done, as long as we don't burn it, we've done pretty well. And we have the bacon done. And so now we get to going on the dips. Let's do, let me look at the recipes. These next two recipes are really easy. We have a jalapeno popper dip and the corn dip. Let's get going on the corn dip next because we need to cook the corn on the stove using the bacon grease. And I've got this tool that I've been wanting to use since last summer. Last summer I preserved up 95 ears of corn that I purchased from a local farmer. I used all of that. Corn, I was able to get fresh corn in the grocery store. And one of you had sent me this corn cutter and I've been wanting to try it ever since, but I haven't bought fresh corn, so I haven't had to, oh my goodness, cut any corn kernels off the cob. Oh my gosh, friends, this is going to be a game changer this summer when I preserve up the corn. Let me show you how this thing works. This is amazing. I'm so excited about this. I am getting corn all over the floor though, but that's okay. It's almost like a potato peeler, except it's curved. You can see the blade is curved there. And so you put this curved blade on your kernels of corn and it cuts it around the cob really easily. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. So when I preserve up this summer's corn harvest, my goal is gonna be to do 150 ears of corn this summer. I am going to use this handy dandy tool and I can link it down below if you're interested. I have been wanting to try it since last summer, but I haven't had any corn to cut off the cob. One thing to note when using that corn cob cutter is it does fling kernels, which when you use a knife too, kernels fling. I think that's just the nature of cutting corn off the cob. So my plan is this summer is to do that in a huge stainless steel bowl so that any of the corn kernels that kind of fling off, I am gonna catch them in a stainless steel bowl. So I preserved up, like I said, 95 ears of corn and I used all of that up about a month and a half ago so that's why I'm thinking that if I do 150 ears that will get us one whole year's worth of corn that I preserved up from a local farmer or hopefully it'll be from my own garden I do have over 100 ears of corn growing in the garden right now and it looks really well so we'll just see how well they do if they produce well then I won't purchase any from you know local farmers to supplement what I'm growing but if they don't produce enough I will Go ahead and go down to the local farmer's market and get some corn to preserve up because it is so worth the effort corn fresh grown in season blanched frozen is probably one of my favorite things to preserve the flavor is just so good it's so fresh tasting it frozen corn from the store is good but it is not the same as preserving it yourself so if you've never done it before i'd highly recommend it it is so worth it I put on gloves anytime I work with jalapenos or really any hot pepper for that matter because I have burnt myself before just from touching the peppers. And so I like to be safe, so I just put a pair of gloves on. I need the jalapenos for both of the dips, obviously the jalapeno popper dip and the corn dip. And so I'm gonna go ahead and chop all of them now while I have my gloves on. Both the red pepper and red onion are prepped for the warm corn dip. Those are gonna cook in the same pan with the corn along with some of these jalapenos, but I, the corn takes a little bit longer to cook. So as soon as the corn is ready, I'll put the red pepper and onion in that with the jalapenos. Now I am prepping all this food and I didn't even mention, I'm making salted 
not salted. <laughs> I'm making brown butter Rice Krispie treats with a twist as well. That's one of the other things I'm going to bring. And on this day that I'm doing all this prep, it's a Thursday and the party's not until Saturday. So when I was thinking of what recipes I wanted to make, I knew I needed to make a dip and my friend asked me to make cheesecake. And so the rest of the things I made, I had in the back of my mind, what are things that I can make a day in advance? And Because Thursday was the day I had to do this. I could not do this on Friday. I had other obligations. And so that's one trick that, you know, if you're hosting a party, think what you can do in advance. So the corn is browning up nicely. I think it's time to add the peppers that we just chopped and onions. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit. Garlic puck going in. We need to check on the cheesecakes. Oh man, look at that. Look how beautiful those little cheesecakes are. They look done. I think they're done. We're gonna take them out. Yeah, those feel done to me. We're gonna let those cool completely and then we'll take them out of the little muffin liners. I'm going to set this oven to 350 degrees. This morning I pulled out some sandwich bread dough from the freezer and I had this rising on the counter all morning and it is ready to go into the oven. So as soon as this oven is, it's at 321, 322. As soon as this is preheated, we'll get this sandwich bread in the oven this is just for josh and i to eat for sandwich bread for this week and i'll probably slice one up and turn it into french toast for some freezer meal breakfast because we haven't had french toast in a while so i want to finish up this dip the last two ingredients that need to be prepped for both of the recipes are some cheese. I have Monterey Jack cheese here and some cheddar. And both recipes need cheese. So I'm gonna go ahead and get it all shredded up. That there is our Monterey Jack cheese shredded. And this is our sharp cheddar. I think I have all my mise en place out. I thought I had all the cheese shredded and I realized I forgot to shred the Parmesan. So I went ahead and got that shredded up. I am starting with the jalapeno popper dip because I want my corn to cool down just a little bit. Both of these dips are gonna be served warm, but I want them cold until I reheat them at the party. So I want my corn to cool off. I don't want it to melt all this cheese before the party. So I am adding Parmesan cheese, cream cheese, bacon, and all of my jalapenos to this bowl. To this, I'm gonna add pepper, salt, sour cream, mayonnaise, sharp cheddar cheese, green onion, and some garlic powder. Now we're gonna mix all of this together. Now that it's all mixed together, we can put it into our serving dish. This dish I'm gonna heat the dip up in as well. Now 
I'm gonna pop this into the fridge and the day of the party, I will heat this up in the oven for about 30 minutes at 350 degrees. And I'm gonna serve this with chips. There's gonna be a veggie tray there too, so people could dip veggies in it if you wanted a low carb option. But I'm gonna bring chips to serve with this. And then we can get going on the other corn dip. And this is gonna be a warm corn dip too. Or a warm dip. And we'll get our corn into our bowl. I'm gonna to top the jalapeno popper dip with some green onions and bacon when it comes out of the oven. But I will do that when it comes out of the oven. So in here now we have our peppers, onions, and corn. I decided before I finish that corn dip that corn needs to cool a little bit more. So I just threw the corn in the refrigerator and we're gonna make the brown buttered Rice Krispie Treats. And I'm gonna do this a little bit different than the way I normally do it. I've got this recipe down in the description box along with everything else. But a few of you, when I made this recipe and I posted the recipe on Instagram, you had mentioned that you mix in some mini marshmallows right before it's done. So there's some little bits of marshmallow bite in each bite. And I'm looking for my marshmallows, I'm gonna go grab them. And I thought that I would go ahead and give that a try today. So what I'm gonna do, because I am making these for a party, and this normally is done in a nine by 13 and they make really thick Rice Krispies. I don't want really thick Rice Krispies to serve at a party because I want people to be able to, you know, try different desserts and not get too full. They could have a cheesecake and this. And so what I'm doing is I lined a full cookie sheet with parchment paper and we're actually gonna put the Rice Krispies treats on this so that we can make really small ones and I can cut them really little. And I'm considering putting them in the little mini muffin cups. If that's cute, if it's not cute, I'll just cut them up really small and put them on a serving tray. So I have a little less than one cup of butter in here and while this is browning, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of avocado spray on our parchment paper. With these brown butter rice crispy treats, normally I would use one cup of butter, but I'm just using the last of that block. I used part of this block for the crust on the cheesecakes and that will be enough to get a nice flavor. I don't feel like getting any more butter out, but I do want to grease the bottom of this parchment so that these Rice Krispies don't stick to it. So I'm gonna go wash my hands really well now. So the butter is nice and brown, so I'm gonna move that off the heat a little bit while I add my marshmallows. I'm gonna have this batch of marshmallows melt completely and then I will add some more marshmallows to melt about halfway and add some vanilla here. And a good pinch of salt. When you're making this, you're gonna think, oh my goodness, that butter's never gonna mix in with the marshmallows, and then it magically all of a sudden does when it's perfectly melted. So this is all homogenized and melted. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the stove off. And I've never done this before, so I'm just making this up. I'm gonna add maybe half of this bag of marshmallows to it. Give it maybe a little mix, but not too much, because I don't want those to melt really. And now I'm gonna add my Rice Krispies. Now, this is a two cup measure. So I need to add 10 cups. Three, four. Wait, five, I think I just added five. That would be two, four, six, eight, 10. That would be 10. Oh yeah, the marshmallows are staying intact there, which is good. Another idea one of you guys gave me was to make them Rice Krispies and then put them in the oven under the broiler for a minute and toast them and kind of toast the marshmallow. I considered doing that today. Maybe I still will, I don't know. Maybe just try one new thing at a time, which would be to add the marshmallows before they're, 
Are they melting? No, they're staying together. They're kind of melting. So maybe what I should have done is add them like at this stage right now. I'm gonna add a few more Rice Krispies just because I added so many more marshmallows and they are kind of melting. I don't want it to be too sticky. And I got a question on that video. How do I get the Rice Krispie mix not to stick to the spatula and the bowl and I don't it absolutely does stick to the spatula and bowl and you just have to soak it off or lick it off yeah I think my marshmallows completely melted in there so that was kind of a bust I should have added them like at this stage right now live and learn maybe I will add a couple right now I'm gonna add a few more of these too. Oh, that's perfect. That's what I wanted. Let me show you after I get this pushed out. I wanted the marshmallows to halfway melt like that. Do you see that? I didn't want full marshmallows in this. That plastic wrap didn't work super well, so I ended up taking another piece of parchment paper and using that to push out the Rice Krispie treats. Like I said, I want these really thin so I can cut them into like not bite size maybe like two two bite size and i'm trying to just round the edges and make them even i probably spent way too much time working on this it probably didn't matter but the mixing the marshmallows in right at the end like i did i really liked that i got those little marshmallow bits and this again i think would be really good if i broiled this that is exactly what i wanted the little marshmallows to be kind of partially melted and i pushed it into a rectangle and I'll cut these into little bite-sized squares the day of the party. What I'm gonna do is once those Rice Krispies cool completely, I will take them and wrap them in a ton of saran wrap and keep them nice and fresh that way so they'll be ready for the party. So the bread is done. I just took its temperature. It's at 205 degrees. When you're baking bread, you know it's done when it's between 190 and 200 degrees. So our bread is done. So I'm gonna take that out and now we can finish up the last of the dip. I got it right here. Through the corn, we're gonna add cheddar cheese, Monterey Jack cheese, our green onions, bacon, oh no. Oh, I already put the jalapeno in here. <laughs> for a second, I thought I used all the jalapeno for the other dip, but we're good. We're gonna add two tablespoons of ranch powder seasoning. This is homemade ranch powder. Some black pepper, salt, a block of cream cheese, and one cup of sour cream. And we're gonna mix all this together. I'm gonna heat this up in the oven, just like the other dip. And so I'm gonna put it in this casserole dish. And then we'll just serve it out of this. It smells good, that ranch is a really interesting and I think gonna be delicious additive to this dip. I'm gonna serve this with chips as well. And they will, they'll be veggies, so if people want to dip veggies in it, they can. This is kind of more of a, chip dip, I think. When this comes out of the oven all nice and bubbly, I will top it with some green onions as well. I am, I think, gonna take a little bit of this cheese that we have left that's shredded and just top it with that.
these little mini cheesecakes are cool now, so I'm gonna put them in this glass dish that has a lid so I can put a cover on it and put them in the fridge. It wouldn't be a cooking day if I didn't need to clean up the kitchen after. I would say on this day, I did a decent job cleaning up as I went. Like I said, I like to have the garbage can out. And then on this day, I did have the dishwasher unloaded as well. So I was able to load the dishes as I went. And so that made it a lot easier. But there's always, you know, a counter that needs to be wiped, a stove that needs to be cleaned, a floor that needs to be swept after any time in the kitchen. But I would say that... It's pretty awesome that we got more than one thing done in the kitchen and we only messed it up this one time. So I was able to get the two dips done, the two desserts, and I baked some bread too. So that bread is bread that the dough was frozen in the freezer and then I pulled it out of the freezer early in the morning. I let it rise and then I just, you saw, I threw it in the oven and I baked the bread fresh. I am working on, like I said, I was working on, I'm working on a hosting e-course with my mom, but I'm also working on a packet on how to have fresh dough in the freezer that you can pull out whenever you want to make some fresh bread. So that was actually recipe testing there. I'm pretty sure I have the recipe down, but I want to keep testing it and keep testing it until I just know that it is perfect. So that was what that is. So if you're interested in that or the e-course, I do have an email list that I can put down below if you want to sign up for that and you can be one of the first to be notified when both the e-course that my mom and I are creating is done and the bread the frozen bread dough one is done I'm really excited about both of those and so it's just a really fun exciting time so here we are sweeping the floor <laughs> the joys I really do enjoy being able to kind of give my kitchen a refresh before I move on with my day after a cooking day like this I have my headphones in, I get to enjoy listening to a podcast, and I get to see the fruits of my labor, basically of turning this messy kitchen into a clean kitchen again. You can see my dogs walking around in the background. They're probably a little annoyed with me that I'm sweeping up these cheese bits and they're not in here getting to pick them up. So here we have all the final dips and dessert, the bread that's just for Josh and I to enjoy this week. And like I said, I think one of those is gonna become French toast, our mini lemon blueberry cheesecakes. I just put the green onions in a container so I can bring that and top both of these when they come out of the oven. They should be ooey and gooey and bubbly and delicious. And then I will cut these the day of the party really small so they can be bite sized. I'm gonna go ahead and get the dishwasher started. It is the day of the party, and I am getting ready to head out to the party. And I put both of the dips in the oven at my house for about an hour at just 300 to start the warming process so that they don't have to take as long to warm up at my friend's house and they're not going straight cold into the oven there because that would take a good hour, hour and a half. I've got the chips here that I'm gonna serve the two dips with. I will cut the Rice Krispies when we get to my friend's house and I've got the cheesecake bite. So I think I have everything here that I need. I just need to pack up the car. Let me show you what this is looking like. It smells so good. Oh yeah, this is gonna be good. Oh, friend. I can already tell you both of these are gonna be delicious. They probably have another 20 minutes or so. I will preheat their oven to 350 and let it get all ooey gooey and bubbly. Same with this one. It's just starting to get that way around the outside. We'll cut these. We'll put these on a serving plate. And there is my contribution to the party. The beautiful thing was yesterday, I didn't have to do anything to prep for this party. I had other things like hanging out at the house and just getting some other household chores done. And so I was able to focus on other things and not cooking. And today I was able to sleep in as much as you can with a six month old and get ready. And now we're gonna take all this to the party. My kitchen's clean. 
I'm gonna come home to a clean kitchen so I can just go enjoy the party and enjoy my friends. So thank you for being here. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this, I will pop a couple of my other videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being you. And I can't wait to see you next time. Bye friend.